Welcome to the program. Hi, I'm Okpe Yemi Owoshini. We start off with business news. Nigeria recorded $204.47 million as letters of credit payments in the first quarter of 2024. According to the international payments data obtained from the Central Bank of Nigeria, the figure recorded in the first quarter represents a decrease of 62.7% compared to the $549.22 million reported in the same quarter in 2023. A letter of credit is a written undertaking given by a bank at the request of its customers for the importation of visible goods. Such transaction obligates the bank itself to pay the exporter up to a stated amount within a prescribed time frame upon presentation of stipulated documents that conform to the terms and conditions of the document's credit. However, the data from CBN showed a significant decrease in Nigeria's international trade and financial transactions, which occurred at the period the Naira devaluation kicked in. President Bola Tinumbu has said the Lagos Calabar Coastal Highway will give 30 million people improved access to production and marketing centers. President Tinumbu disclosed this in his remarks in Lagos during the flag off of the 700 kilometer Lagos Calabar Highway project and several others to commemorate his first year in office. According to the president, during the period of construction, the road will provide direct employment for thousands of people and indirect employment for tens of thousands of politicians and more. In March, the federal government started constructing the highway designed to extend through nine states with two spurs leading to the northern state. The project which necessitated the demolition of some buildings faced significant criticism and interrogation from Nigerians and the National Assembly who believed the timing was inappropriate. The Lagos Calabar Coastal Highway project is designed to stretch 700 kilometers and pass through nine states along Nigeria's coastal shoreline. In March 2024, the federal government commenced the construction beginning with the first phase of the project, which stretches 47.47 kilometers from Victoria Island to the Lake Deep Sea port in Lagos State. The coastal highway includes a spa route to the north central part of the country. Addressing dignitaries at the inauguration, President Timbu says construction of the 700 kilometers Lagos Calabar Coastal Highway would revolutionize transportation in Nigeria and boost the unique economic strength of its zone. We said we will do this road. We are determined to do it. The way we are going, we have a road that will outlast us and outlive all of us here present. That is how to build the future. The project is just more than a mere road. It's a symbol of hope, unity, and prosperity. On his part, Minister of Works, David Omai, who assured that due process was followed in awarding the contract for the transformative project, disclosed that over 40 new projects are ongoing across the country and that all compensations up to kilometer six of the Lagos Calabar project have been paid. When you were the governor of Lagos State, you were not just thinking for Lagos State. And that's what gave birth to the deep sea port that is almost completed. Mr. President, we were spending a lot of money because of the shallow depth of their papa seaport. And you dreamt of having a seaport where we could have ships coming into there without doing transshipment. Before now, we were doing transshipment from Bene Republic and also far away, where Nigeria was spending billions of naira 
and dollars to do transshipment. We have gotten approval that we begin a road of 1,000 kilometers from Sokoto to Badagri here in the northern part of Nigeria. Not only that, I want Nigerians to know Mr. President is a president of Nigeria. This project is not in Southwest alone. In separate remarks, governors at the event described the project as an audacious step by the Tinubu led government, which will facilitate economic development across connecting states. And therefore, Mr. President, I can only pray and wish that as you have started this, we will see to a logical conclusion. Not only will Lagos begin to breathe, because we have a deep support that this is going to, we can begin to see economic activity, and you can begin to see that journeys that hitherto will take long hours, we can handshake within a couple of hours and minutes. I want to stand here, truly proud as a Lagosian, as one of your sons, to say that indeed, you are doing well, and want to thank God for your life. This road, like God of Lagos State rightly acknowledged, we also open that tourism that we have launched, searched, to ensure that we open Nigeria too. Mr. President, posterity will be very kind to you. You thought of this project, you conceived it, and not only have you begun implementation, you've ensured that you started that implementation within your first year in office underscoring that commitment to the Renewed Hope Initiative. According to the federal government, the second segment of the project designed to extend approximately 55 kilometers from Lake East Deep Sea Port to the boundaries between Ogun and Ondo states have received approval from the Bureau of Public Enterprises. Other segments of the highway will be constructed independently, including a segment extending from Port Harcourt and River State to Bioso State, and another from Delta State to Ondo State. Chidi Igwe, TV3 CC News, Lagos. We'll go on a short break and be back with company news. Welcome back. The management of First Bank Monument Bank has disclosed plans to raise 150 billion naira between now and September 2024. The chief executive officer of FCMB Group PLC, Ladi Balogun, discloses on the sidelines of the company's annual general meeting in Lagos. According to him, the company has devised a variety of means to meet the Central Bank of Nigeria's new capital requirement. He said their plans during this period will be raising 150 billion naira through a series of structures that will be concluded by the end of September. The CBN in March 2024 announced a new banking recapitalization exercise aimed at supporting the $1 trillion economy target of President Bola Tinubu's administration. Nigeria's business aviation firm Vivajet has announced plans to make business aviation more inclusive. The chief operating officer of Vivajet, Tejomadi Salami, said the company is leveraging innovation to make business aviation more accessible and affordable, thereby democratizing access to an often exclusive service. Salami discloses during the 2024 Africa CEO in Kigali, an annual conference that gathers thousands of business leaders and policymakers from across Africa and beyond. According to Salami, the firm's innovative approach has led to the development of digital platforms ChatterXE and FlyPJX, both brands affiliated with Viva Jets. We'll go on a break now, but when Money Matter returns, we'll be discussing Nigeria's GDP growth dropping to 2.98% in the first quarter of 2024. Don't go away. <music> Welcome back. The National Bureau of Statistics says Nigeria's gross domestic product declined by 2.98% in the first quarter of 2024. 
this latest report, the Bureau donations scored growth rate at 2.98%, saying the growth rate is higher than the 2.31% recorded in the same quarter in 2023, but lower than the 3.46% recorded in the fourth quarter of 2023. According to the NBS, the performance of the GDP in the first quarter was driven mainly by the services sector, which recorded a growth of 4.32% and contributed 58.04% to the aggregate GDP. The agricultural sector also saw a modest growth of 0.18%, improving from a decline of 0.09% in the first quarter of 2023. Now, joining me to discuss this decline further is Professor of Economics at the Adekunle Adjassi University at Kungba Akoko, Shola Oloron Femi. Thank you for joining me on the program, Professor Oloron Femi. Now, what is your initial um, assessment of Nigeria's GDP performance in the first quarter of 2024, um, considering the reported decline rate of 2.98%? Um, yeah, thank you. The, to me, the performance is more too good. When you compare it with uh, the situation of things in the last uh, quarter of 2023, in 2023, last quarter, it was 3.46%. But this year, it becomes 2.98%. Uh, so that is, uh, to me, it's a maximum low. It's nothing to write to me about. Now, the services sector appears to be um, a significant driver of um, the GDP growth in the first quarter of the year. What factors do you believe contributed to its growth? And how sustainable do you think um, this new trend is? Yes, the service sector, to me, presently is the driver and number one of the Nigerian uh, economic uh, sectors. At least when you compare it with the contribution of other sectors, is a service sector contributed 58.04% when you compare with other sectors of the Nigeria economy. Presently, the sectors of Nigeria economy can, can be classified into three different areas. We have the agricultural sector, industrial sector, and of course the service sector. So presently, the service sector is the one that is contributing the uh, best to the GDP. Now, away from the services sector, despite challenges such as um, security concerns and c climate variability, the agriculture sector also showed, um, showed an improvement of 0.18%. What are the key factors behind this growth and what are the potential implications for food security and um, rural livelihoods, bearing in mind that inflation has been soaring throughout the year? Well, it all depends uh, from which pers perspective at which you are looking at it. To me, I will not believe that uh, agriculture has uh, contributed significantly to, uh, to GDP. It only contributed 21.07%, uh, which is less than 26.11% that it contributed during the preceding uh, quarter of uh, 2023. So to me, I will not believe that it has fared well and uh, mind you, when you are talking of uh, food security, food security is not driven by, 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 by just uh, agriculture alone. You see, we have three different things that we can use to assess if there is food security or not at any point in time. There is need for you to talk in terms of the food availability. Now, according to the report, the non-oil sector remains the dominant contributor to Nigeria's GDP. Which specific industries within the non-oil sector do you see as the primary driver of growth? And what policies or initiatives could um, further bolster their performances? I told you I differ a bit from that your position. I don't believe that agriculture has contributed fairly to GDP, to GDP. You see, it contributed just 21.07%, which is less than 26.11% it contributed during the preceding uh, quarter of uh, 2023. So I don't, I don't think I will believe that uh, it has contributed. And uh, mind you, I, when you are talking of food security, three different things must be in place. 
you must talk of uh, food availability. Not only that, uh, food demand, and of course, uh, food utilization. Food demand is in terms of uh, price, and of course, uh, the income being received by the citizen in the country. So it is only when we combine these three that you'll be able to attain the uh, food security, which agriculture, in a way, will contribute to. Now, um, based on the later GDP report, what policy um, recommendations would you propose to sustain and enhance um, Nigeria's economic growth in the coming quarters? Yeah, thank you. I want to believe that the that, uh, non oil sector has contributed uh, greatly to GDP growth. For instance, if you talk of uh, agriculture, you say agriculture has been able to contribute to, to certain extent, and apart from that, how about a telecom telecommunication, which is one of the major things in the side of uh, uh, in the side of uh, service uh, sector? You see, for us to be able to ensure that non-oil sector continue to contribute to GDP, then we must be able to at least address some some, some things, some basic things. For instance, on the side of agriculture. There must be proper funding. And not only that, research is as well very important. You see, this day we are talking of a bi a biotechnology in agriculture. You see, government can go ahead to increase all this so that the agriculture will be able to take its position in its contribution to, to, to GDP. Mm -hmm. And apart from that, telecommunication as well is very important. So for telecommunication to be able to contribute, you no know, government must be able to create an enabling environment, and of course encourage more investment to the industry. So that with that, non oil sector will continue to contribute uh, high, highly to the GDP sector. So the economy has seen different um, policies in the past couple of months, from um, the removal of fuel, sub fuel subsidy to um, the CBN increasing MPL three times in a year. Now, what other policy will you recommend for the government to implement to make the economy better than it is at the moment? Yeah. What we need to do to be able to increase our GDP, the first thing we need to do will be for us to increase our production base. The problem we are having now is that the production base of Nigeria is very poor. What are those things we are producing? We are not doing very well in agriculture, despite the fact that it is contributing uh, fairly to GDP. We have the land. So there is need for us to do more so that we will be able to you know, increase our, our GDP as, uh, as, year, as year goes on. How will you assess the government's current economic policies and initiatives in light of the GDP performance in the first quarter of 2024? And then um, what adjustments, if any, would you suggest? Yes, yeah, if I may have to remind you, you see recently CBN, they, they came out with a new interest rate. Interest rate was increased to 26.25 from a 24.75% that it was before. So the import of that is that, uh, you say, a small-scale business and medium-scale business, people will not be able you know, to get loan at that, uh, at that high interest rate. So I think uh, one of the things that government need to do will be for them to reduce interest rates to the BRS minimum so that people will be able to afford to afford it and uh, you know, start on with their business. Now, I would like to know, are there any potential risks or challenges that could impact Nigeria's economic performance in the nearest future? Yes, the current uh, government policies are good. But to me, they are biting. People are suffering. You know, I just made mention of uh, the example uh, of uh, the policy introduced by the Central Bank. A situation in which CBN increased the interest rate to 26.25 percent. No, this thing has taken life uh, out of people. So the government 
to come up with more friendly policies. More friendly policies that will be able to emancipate you know, the, 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 the citizen, their well being. Well, Professor, you mentioned quite a number of challenges. Uh, now, I would like to know how um, how should policymakers and businesses prepare to address all the challenges you've mentioned? Yes, concerning the recent adjustment, first of all, I would like to talk on the subsidy remover on petroleum. Don't forget that uh, the cost of uh, things are very high these days, and the reason for that is because of this uh, subsidy of a thing. Government is supposed to have put so many things in place before, you know, embarking on that uh, on that on that policy. To me, it's a very lofty one, but at the same time, it is not uh, it is not the, the the right time for government to do that. So that is the reason why commodities are very costly. So as much as possible, government should come up with policy that you know will improve the livelihood of a citizen. So from, from now, they must be able to tell us what is happening, what, what is going to happen to, uh, for instance, the, 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 the potter cut of it in refinery, the Kaduna refinery, all those uh, refineries should be put, put in place. Nigeria economy potential is constrained by many structural EUs. You understand? You say we have many EUs that we need to uh, deal with. For instance, inadequate uh, infrastructure is one of uh, those things. Like bad road, and not only bad road, we have a problem with uh, electricity. You see, these are some of the things that government must try to improve on. And apart from that, how about the obstacle to investment? Eh? People are not having access to capital that they can use to start up their own business. How about lack of confidence in country valuation, uh, currency valuation? Eh? Today, it seems our, our, our uh, our, our Naira is worthless. How about security? So these are the things that governments must ensure that it's solved. The policy, the policy makers, you know, most especially those working under the present uh, administration, they must try as much as possible to, to attend to the area of electricity. They must try as much as possible to address a uh, bad road. You see, most of the time, even when you have your when 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 you you are bringing your 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 your, your, your farm uh, products, no, it will not be easy for you to do that. So automatically, it will affect the cost. Mm -hmm. So as much as possible, there are so many things that government must do. How about lack of technology for processing, packaging, and storage of agricultural products? Eh? So those are the things that government must attend to. For instance, there is lack of information on marketing channels for, 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 for farmers and processors. So government must put in place those of the, uh, most of those things that we instruct you know, those people who work in that area so that the uh, Nigeria economy will be okay. Well, Professor of Economics at Adekunle Ajasi University, Shola Olorun Femi, many thanks for lending your thoughts on the program. That's it on this episode of the program. Many thanks for joining us. I am Okpa Yemi Owoshi, and see you next time.